Lord Jesus, in your name, we are grateful and thankful for this time. Lord, as we do this recording, we, we want to pray, Lord, with a lot of faith and believe in you that, um, God, as we prepare for these 21 days of prayer and fasting, that, God, you will, you will be with us. You will lead us, God. You let your presence move so strongly, so deeply, Lord, in everyone who will listen to this, that, God, will, this will lead them to be before your presence. Father, we pray that this will be out of the outsprings of your presence, O God, and that you will reach to each one of them, Lord, from wherever places they will be, and that you let your presence go with them, O God. We thank you, Father, for the scriptures that will be read, for, for the expositions that will be done, for the prayers that will be done, for the recording, Lord, and the people who are here for this recording, Lord. We pray for each one of them that, God, you will use us as your vessel, Lord, to deliver this to your people, O God. And we pray that this will be such a great time um, and moment with you, Lord, for the youth ministry, that we will grow and that, Father, we will we will get into a better place, a nearer place, a deeper place with you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Welcome to the Youth 21 Days of Prayer and Fasting. I hope you are so excited for this. If you have never fasted, welcome. If you have, let's continue with this journey. And I just challenge you guys, even if um, our main point is to pray, but I would want us to just challenge ourselves to fast. Even if you'll do one day a week, two days a week, three days a week, if you can, four days, if you can, five days. Um, I know we are all busy. We are having schools. We are having jobs. So you can try and do wet fasting. You can try to do, this is, this, is, this, is, this is the Daniel one, and try to do the Esther one of, of just, you know, take some either supper or dinner or whatever you call it. <laughs> Or you can take vegetables only, or you can take water. Just how you do it best as an individual, that's what I would ask us to do. But ideally is to ensure that we all focus for the next 21 days to just pray and fast and commit all these things that we will be committing to the Lord in prayer and getting and delving deeper in the scripture. So I hope you're excited for this and just bring your spiritual game. We know you say bring your A game, so now <laughs> bring your spiritual game. So this day one, we'll be doing adoration and confession. Then we'll have day two where we'll talk about thanksgiving. Then we'll have the presence of God going with us in day three. Then we'll have the assurance of I am with you in day four. Then we'll have um, walking with courage, you know in day five and then on saturday we will have our worship day so that they will allow us to 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 fast in our own ways and on sunday will be a rest day so then monday will be back again with scripture and prayer until the third week so just be tuned be focused ensure that you tune in every moment that we air this uh you know, every, uh, every day so that you can be part of this. And we hope that you'll experience the joy and the presence of the Lord. Welcome so much. So let us pray. Our Lord and our Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you, Lord, as we begin our prayer and fasting today. We ask of your presence. We ask that you lead us. We ask that you go with us, O oh God. We pray that, Lord, we will, it will be a time as we begin this year, Lord, to begin it with you over and over again, Lord. We pray to experience the newness of God. We pray to get deeper in the love of God, in the knowledge of Christ, and in prayer, O oh God. So we ask of you and we trust in you, Lord, so deeply, so immensely, Lord, for each one of us. And this is our prayer of faith in Jesus' name. Amen. So, for adoration and confession, we are going to study the book of Psalms, Psalms chapter 99. And um, if you're listening, well and good, you can follow. If you are in a place that you're seated and you can get out your Bible, that would be fantastic. So just get your Bible, your notebook, your pen, and let's delve in this word together. And, and, you know, and have this moment. So one of the things that we know about adoration and confession, first of all, is that adoration is just showing deep love and respect. It is worshipping. It is praise. It is revering. It is exalting. It is extolling. It is esteeming highly of someone. And in this case, we are talking about esteeming God highly. And... In Latin, it is called ado, 
ratio. Hey, we are not Latin, but welcome. And it is basically to say that it is giving homage or worship. So we look at Psalms chapter 99, verse 1. The Bible says that the Lord reigns, let the nation tremble. He sits enthroned between the cherubim, let the earth shake. So we'll be going, we'll be expositing verse by verse. So just go with us so that it's easier for you. So in verse 1, we can see that we see the sovereignty of God. Not just as a king, but we see the sovereignty of God, his power, and his existence, existence from time immemorial. And the psalmist writes and say, let the earth shake. And ideally, you look at... What, what, where is the earth? The earth is us. It is us human beings. Where our dwelling place. When we look, when we think of the greatness and the power of God, the psalmist say, let everyone, let the earth shake. Let us people who know the Lord quiver. Let the sinners shake. For when we know the greatness of God, it causes us to, you know, to tremble before his presence. Um, I'll, 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 I'll tell us where to jump into as we go by. So I'll jump, jump into verse 3. Let them praise your great and awesome name, for he is holy. And we look at the reason why the psalmist say to praise his name. And the thing we see is because he is holy. Now, when we talk about holy, we talk about several things. To be set apart. And it describes purity. It is being unpolluted. It is eternal. That is the art of being holy. It means that God is holy, has been set apart um, in so many ways. He is not created. Therefore, he, is, he cannot be contained in the creation. In his holiness, he's been set apart from us as human beings. And that is the reason why the psalmist say that let them praise your great and awesome name because he is holy. Now when you talk about he is holy, we are talking about the character of God, the nature of God, his essence, his being. That is who he is. It is not about him being um, smarter or stronger or even older, you know, older than anyone else, or even better. No, 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 no. He cannot be measured by any human terminologies or timetable or anything. He is holy. And for that reason, we are called as the people of God to praise his holy name. We will jump into verse 4. And it says that the king is mighty, he loves justice, he, is, he has established equity in Jacob. You have done what is just and right. Exalt the Lord our God and worship at his footstool. He is holy. Look again, we see the repetition of the word he is holy in verse 3 and then in verse 5. We will see again in the later verse in this same chapter. And of course when we see the Bible um, saying or repeating something, we know that it is emphasis and therefore we should take it with more seriousness than just any other word. So we look again and see that he's exalt the Lord our God and worship at his footstool. He is holy. In verse 5 we see exalting the Lord um, when we understand the greatness of God. When we understand the sovereignty of God, it leads us to worship. It makes us worship him. Not merely because of what he has done. Not merely of what, because of what somebody else said about God. But we worship him because we understand who he is. The actual fact of who he is. And we see that uh, in, this, in this verse, we are told worship at his footstool. And maybe for us, um, you know, would ask, what, where is his foot, footstool? And in exposition, we say that scriptures explain scriptures. So I'm going to direct us to some verses that explain about footstool of God. Um, you can see that when we talk about footstool in this verse, this is verse 5b. It is connected to verse 1 
B, which says, He sits enthroned between the cherubim. The cherubi. Let the earth shake. And this we can also find, um, that is the footstool of God. We can also find it in First Chronicles chapter 28, verse 2, that says that the ark of the covenant, that meant the dwelling and the presence of God, and that was his footstool. You can read it in that book. Then in Lamentations chapter 2, verse 1, it says that Jerusalem is his footstool. Then in Isaiah 66, verse 1, Matthew chapter 5, verse 35, Acts chapter 7, verse 49, the Bible says that the earth as a whole is his footstool. So when the Bible says, worship at his footstool, for he is holy, it calls us as here who are on earth to adorn the Lord, to extol the Lord, to worship, to praise him, for we are at his presence. We are at his footstool. And my prayer is that wherever you will be, if you're in the house, just get a moment and, you know, be at the feet of Jesus and worship the Lord. Um, and again, this emphasis of, for he is holy, you see it in Isaiah 6, chapter 3, and Revelation chapter 4, verse 8, when the Bible says that holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. He who was, he is, and he is to come. And we see the heavenly uh, bodies all come together and worshiping the Lord, for he is holy. A repetition again. So we'll jump into quickly verse 6 and 7. And the Bible says... Uh, Moses and Aaron were among his priests. Samuel was among those who called on uh, those who called. Uh, Samuel was among those who called on his name. They called on the Lord and answered, and he answered them. He spoke to them from the pillar of cloud. They kept his statutes and the decrees he gave them. So in these verses, as we do this exposition, I would want us to see that the psalmist is encouraging us through the people who are there in the beginning of times um, from the word of God. Remember, here we are talking about a priest, and we are talking about prophets, priest Moses and Aaron and prophet Samuel. And he encourages us that these people called on the name of the Lord, and God was faithful enough to answer them. The presence of a cloud of peer meant the presence of God. Therefore, when we... Um, become or when we desire or when we call on the name of the Lord, we can bank on this, um, you know, we can bank on this in the knowledge that he is faithful enough to answer us. So we see, and the Bible is very clear to note that their obedience to the Lord, you know, when it says that he kept, they kept his statutes and decrees that he had given them, the Bible is clear to note that their obedience to the Lord was something that was important before the presence of the Lord. And therefore, I would just call us in this prayer and fasting moment that we may seek to obey the Lord. We may seek to do what he would want us to do. And verse 8 and 9, which is the last, the last verses of this um, uh, chapter, we see, O oh Lord our God, you answered them. You are to Israel a forgiving God. Though you punished their misdeeds, exalt the Lord our God and worship at his holy mountain. For the Lord our God is holy. The third time we are reading the word holy. Uh, we read it in verse, in verse 2, or no, verse 3, verse 5, and in verse 8. And you can imagine it's so placed strategically that you can see where. It was placed in verse 3. It was after acknowledging who God is, then seeing the justice and the presence of God in verse 5. Then now even in verse 9, we can see that this man, significantly, this man who had walked with the Lord, also knew the Lord as a forgiving God. In as much as they walked with the Lord and their deeds have been mentioned and we can seeing of their, read of the article, of the, not the articles per se, we can read of their stories in the Bible. And so many things have been read and learned about from their stories. They were still, were to know God as a forgiving God. And you can see that the Lord, um, he 
did not approve of any wrongdoing. This meant, of course, to the priest and the prophet, but also to the Israelites. The Lord showed a displeasure of their sin. But in that, they were still to know God as a forgiving God. They were still to understand that God, that this God who loved them is the same God who forgave them. But the same also God who um, had a displeasure of their sin. And that is one thing for us to know as we do this adoration and confession of our sins, that we are to know God as a forgiving God. And again, back to this um, reason why verse 8 says, For the Lord our God is holy. It is for this reason, it is for this reason that we are to get supreme inspiration of adoration and repentance, for he is holy. If we are to worship the Lord, let us worship him because he is holy. If we are to adore, let us adore the Lord because he is holy. If we are to confess our sin, let us do it for we can know that he is holy he is the creator. We are the created ones. We are the creature. Therefore, we are, we are fallen. The Bible says that we, everyone has fallen short of his glory. And if anyone says he's not a sinner, then he makes God a liar. Therefore, all of us, we can say and we can know and we can look into our lives and see that we have actually sinned before the Lord, before a holy God. And because of his character, his nature, his, ens his essence, we are to come to him with adoration and confession. And that is what we are going to do now. And I want to request you from wherever you are, from wherever you're watching this or listening to this, just take this moment, adore the Lord, worship the Lord, extol the Lord, exalt the Lord, lift up your praises and your worship to him and confess all of your sins knowing that you are approaching the Lord God Almighty, a holy God who is seated on his throne. In Jesus' name. So you can join us in prayer. And so join us this moment as we adore and praise and extol the Lord and worship the Lord. And from wherever you are seated, just join us. Uh, if, you're, if you're driving, if you're going home and you're listening in, just tune into this prayer and pray along. And if you're at home, just get a place where you can sit, where you can just worship the Lord and we be together in the presence of the Lord. Father, we worship you this evening, this morning, this time that each one of us is listening to this prayer. Oh Lord, we praise you. We worship you. We extol your holy name. Thank you for your love and your mercies. Thank you for your goodness, oh God. Thank you for your character, your nature, your nature of holiness, oh God. We praise you, you who is seated in between cherubim. You who all oh, the elders and the, and the angels in heaven bow down before you, casting down their crowns and saying, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. Oh God, we join even the nature and all the nations, Father, in saying, holy are you, God. Holy is you who is lifted. Holy is your name that is exalted. And God, in your presence, we just want to let ourselves 
fall at the feet of Jesus to worship you, to praise you, to honor you, to adore you. Oh God, in your presence. And our hearts, Lord Jesus, are lifted to you as you begin these 21 days of prayer and fasting. Lord, our prayer is to worship you. Our prayer is to experience you. Our prayer is to know you. Our prayer is to continue dwelling in the presence of the Most High God. Our prayer is to see you just as you are. Our prayer, Lord, is to adore you. Our prayer is to lift our praises, our worship, our adoration, and our honor to you. That we may sing of the mercies of the Lord forever. That we may adorn you, Lord, you who is exalted and lifted. You who is the creator of the earth, the foundations from the beginnings to the end. You who is in the everlasting, oh God, from the beginning to the end. You who has established your throne and the foundations of the earth. You alone we want to worship and to praise and to honor and adore. And therefore, God, we want to pray that as everyone joins in this worship, and oh God, you may receive our worship in heaven. And oh God, you may hear us. That oh God, these 21 days of, 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 of prayer and fasting, you'll walk with us and lead us and direct us, oh God. We pray that we'll get deeper in you. Oh, deeper yet we pray. Oh, higher in you. Oh, deeper in the word of God deeper Lord in you is what we desire that oh God these 21 days will not just be like any other days that as we begin this year oh God these days will set us forth to what you're preparing us for therefore Jesus we pray for each one of us that as we set a time to pray every day that we set a time to fast in whatever way we will do oh God you'll receive our honor and our worship with you and with that oh God we have just said it and saying that oh God you are holy and in your holiness God you would want people to come to you as holy people and thank you for what Christ did on that cross because it is through that that we can appear in confidence before your throne and because you judge every intent or every act of sin Lord we pray that you would cleanse us and forgive us and wash us and make us as white as snow that you'd separate us from our sins as far as the east is from the west. And oh God, you will accept our worship, Lord, because God, we are already accepted in you through Jesus. Thank you for the atoning sacrifice. Thank you for the cross. And Lord, Lord, this will be our glory. This will be the reason why we can stand before thee. This will be the reason why we can come to you without fear but in confidence because Jesus Christ already did it for us. And Lord, we pray that as we begin this, you'll continue to sanctify us. You will reveal the deepest parts of who we are. You, you reveal to us the deepest parts of our sin and God will continue to, to wash us, oh God, to make us as crimson, Lord. You'll continue to make us be more like you. Therefore, Lord, our desire is to come to you to approach the throne of grace. Oh Lord, that you may wash and make us whole again and make us as holy people for we are your people who you have chosen and have called by your name. Our desire God, as the youths of PCS St. Andrews, Lord, is to continue in the Lord and in worshiping you, O oh God, in adoration of who you are, in extolation of your name, and in holiness, O oh God. For he who called us indeed is holy. And our prayer, O oh God, is that each one of us will be called in this holiness. And O oh God, would you take us through these 21 days? I pray for strength for each one of us. I pray for willingness for each one of us. That oh God will desire to get deeper every day. To get closer. To get nearer every moment in your presence oh God. We ask that you uphold us with your righteous hand. We ask that you take us through these days. And oh God as we set them aside and consecrate them Lord for you. Oh it will be a time that will be renewed. Will be replenished. Will be restored 
restored, will be redeemed, will be revived. Oh God, we pray that you revive this ministry to yourself. You revive each one of us to yourself. Each one of us, God, as we set aside it this time, oh God, will be restored back to you. And we thank you for your presence, God. We thank you for your goodness, oh God. We thank you that you're going with us. We thank you that you're holding us by your hand and you will help us and will walk with us and you will lead us, oh God. Uh, Jesus, as we come, day by day. Oh Lord, as we commune with you and one with another, we will experience the presence of the Lord so deeply, so immensely, so mightily, and that you lead us, God, to the very end of this time that you've set aside to pray and consecrate ourselves to you. We thank you for each one of us, God, and may you lead us into yourself. In Jesus' name, we pray, believing and trusting. Amen. 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 The Lord bless you and we look forward to day two of prayer and fasting.